All right. Welcome to Lab Work 3 with Continuous Technologies. Um, I'm John Heisler. Today we are going to cover a little something that I thought was really impactful that I picked up at the Tableau conference um, this year in Austin, Texas. Um, Chris Love, been following him for a number of years, um, a big advocate for simplicity in not only visualization design but also with integration design. Um, so he is an Ultrix ace. Um, and a Tableau Zen Master, um, corny titles that basically mean he is very good with Ultrix and Tableau, uh, which makes him a perfect sort of um, virtual mentor for me. Um, you can check out his Twitter account, and he also blogs um, at Data Plus Science as well as the Information Lab. So you can actually check out what we're looking at today. Um, he did a blog, and all we are doing is recreating that. So. I encourage you to check that out. Um, we're looking at sand keys, uh, and today we're going to go over a lot of steps in order to create this uh, graph here on the right. But I want you to keep an open mind, uh, as Edward Tufte says, an open mind, um, but not an empty head. Um, don't get worked up if you're not staying on task or uh, step by step with me. Don't even pause the video if you get behind, just stick with it. Um, so sand keys. Sand keys, you've seen them in Google Analytics to show um, clickstream analysis, basically from page one to two to three to four, how many people are falling, falling off after page one, how many people go to this page versus the second page versus the third. Um, sand keys have been around a really long time. Uh, what is it, 1898 was when they first um, were documented, although they may have been around before that. This one right here, the thermal efficiency of steam engines, is basically a thermodynamic system showing where um, energy, um, heat energy, is lost in a system. Uh, and this was published in the minutes of proceedings of the Institute of Civil Engineers, um, perhaps foreshadowing uh, the level of complexity um, is the fact that the first time this was published was in an engineering academic article. Um, but really all sand keys are is they're visualizing relationships of flows between multiple elements. Um, really good um, when used with multiple dimensions um, to show th that flow through a system, right? So multiple dimensions in Google Analytics is pages and through the system is your website. Um, and what you're gonna see is when you, s when you have sexy graphs um, or sexy visualizations, people have a tendency to push them into places they don't or they ought not to go. Um, and hopefully that's what you're going to glean here today. So let's get started. The first thing that we need to do, I'm, first of all, I'm going to be using the Global Superstore data set. Um, you all have it, I hope. Um, if you don't, you can find it on the, uh, on the Tableau website. The first thing that we need to do is we actually need to duplicate our data. So let's pull up. You can do this with custom SQL in Tableau. I'm not going to cover that. Chris Love covers that in his blog post. Um, but I'm an Ultrix guy, so I'm going to duplicate it with Ultrix. Um, so here's my order data set, Global Superstore Orders, Global Superstore Orders. Um, all I'm going to do is pull that in twice. I'm going to create an identical field called row type. But in, in the top stream, I'm going to call the, the row type will be real. In the bottom, it'll be dummy. And then I'll union this together. And you'll have this row type. One of the lines will be real. The other line will be um, dummy. And so for each one line that I had in the original document or in the original data, I have two now. All right. So let's go ahead and connect out to that data set, the duplicated data set. You can see over here to the right, dummy versus real. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing that we need to do outside of Ultrix is we need to create one of many to come calculated fields. The first one that's, that we're going to write is to pad. Rotate if it equals real, then one. Otherwise, give it a 49. 
I'm not going to explain a lot about what these are. Um, again, that's not exactly what I want you to get out of this. Although you can use this video to create your own sand keys. Let's right click and let's create a bin. And let's change that bin size to one and we're gonna call this padded. Whoop. Not my day. Okay. Next thing we're gonna do is we're going to create a T field. Um, what we're gonna do with this T field is we're gonna leverage um, the characteristic of bins that uh, it's really a housing of ranges and not just one figure. Um, we can use this to our advantage, you know, by creating a number of rows for each row in our data set. Desensification. We'll get there in a minute. T. Oops, that's not what T is. been switching um, keyboards a lot and the function and the control seems to be different on each keyboard that I go to. Um, the next thing we need to do is we need to build a um, preliminary visualization. So let's pull T out here onto columns. Let's pull padded into detail. And let's change the mark type to circle. Oops. mark type to circle and let's change T's calculation. This is a table calculation already and let's make this go over padded. So something happened. Something subtle um, but very important. What you're going to notice is we went from basically one dot to 49 dots. So this is the number of marks um, or this number of marks was like never in our data set. So something we've done here is created data where it does not exist. Um, so this is part of desensification. Um, and if you've never used or heard of desensification in Tableau, that's quite all right. Um, if you look in the forums, even people that are seasoned veterans with the desensification method have questions about it. Not really what we want to get into here, um, but know it exists, know it's very powerful, um, and you can use it. So, desensification, that's what we've done here. The next thing that we need to do is create two ranking fields. These ranking fields are going to allow us to actually put our data in space, um, and hopefully that makes sense a little more in a second. Rank one. Rank two, same exact calculation. Why? There's two ranks because if you remember in this visualization, there's two sides to the graph or to the viz. So rank one, rank two. Um, we need to align our data and space in two dimensions. The next thing that we need to do is we need to create a sigmoid function. Um, how many of you or I took a statistics course and remember logistics regression? Uh, typically when I'm in a presentation I ask everyone to raise their hands and then put their hands down if they don't understand something. And when I get to sigmoid functions most people put their hands down. Uh, basically this just gives your data an S-curve. Um, look up logistic regression graph and you will see this everywhere. Um, but this will give us that characteristic curve from one side to the other side um, that is part of or very characteristic of sand key diagrams. So let's call this sigmoid. And here's the paste. Let's apply. My T was uppercase. All right, and now we need to use that sigmoid function as well as those rank calculations um, to basically attach the sigmoid function to our data. 
Uh, so that's what we'll do here. Apply. Okay. Now we can get to the visualization that's really going to start to get us to where we need to be. First, let's pull this in here and let's get this filtered down to the United States. So I just put a country filter in there, quick filter. Um, let's pull region out onto detail. And then let's pull category out onto detail. Let's pull curve onto rows. <clears throat> and now that we have curve on rows, we can start to see something happened. Uh, it's not necessarily exactly what we wanted, but we'll get there. Let's edit this curve calculation. Rank 1 is going to go over specific dimensions. Oops, we forgot, or this didn't make it on. Let's try this again. So, region and category are on detail. Um, padded is there, but we did that earlier. Let's go ahead and highlight all these. Let's pull region up here. So region goes first, then category, then padded. And then in rank two, specific dimensions, let's pull that. And so now we're really starting to see this should, ar this should already just calculate it over padded. We're starting to see what we would expect with the Sankey diagram. So let's go ahead and start to clean this up. Uh, the first thing that I want to do is format lines, rows, grid lines, none, columns none. Let's go ahead and uh, edit this axis. Oops. We're going to go fixed and we're going to go straight to one. We're going to reverse this. If you want to know why, look at Chris's blog. We're going to hide that axis. Let's edit here. We're going to go fixed again. We're going to go negative five to five. Boom. And we're going to hide this as well. We're getting pretty close. The next thing that we need to do is we need to change the mark type to line. Freaks you out. It's not exactly what you would think. And then we need to pull padded onto path. There. That's really close to what we need. The last thing that we need is to represent, have the thickness of the line represent um, the number of sales that we have for each region going to each category. So let's create that last, you know what, actually. Let's hide the unused fields. All right, and then let's go cr create that last field and we're gonna call this line size. You can call it whatever you want. Um, but we are going to create a running total, sorry, a running average of the sum of sales. And it's, again, don't necessarily worry about this, but this defaults to a table calculation. More on table calculations, hopefully, in the near future. Um, all right, as line size would have you believe, let's pull that onto size. And it sort of doesn't really do anything. And regardless of how big you make it, it doesn't really change. That's because this isn't calculating over what we need it to. We need this to calculate over padded. Now we're getting pretty darn close to where we need to be. That doesn't look very good, but if we change the transparency down to 75, I bet we're looking pretty good. Let's pull region up here to color. We're pretty darn close. Um, let's change this sand key just for our own good. Um, but we're not done. Uh, something that may not have jumped out originally, but we have two basically separate graphs um, showing the percent of total for sales for central or for the regions and then on the right side for furniture. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's create a sheet and we're going to say sales and we're going to pull region onto color. And we're going to say quick table calculation percent of total. Let's move this country over here. Again, United States. 
not because we only care about the United States, but because it's easy to look at this way. Let's pull this on here, and let's pull this on here. And let's flip these. All right, looking pretty good here. Format, I'm sorry, I'm a big stickler for this. And let's get rid of these. Looking pretty good. Let's hide the title. Let's duplicate this. We'll do the same exact thing, um, just with region. Let's pull, or sorry, with category. Boom. Boom. Looking pretty good. So region percent of total. Category percent of total. All right. Why didn't you tell me that was wrong? It's a late night. All right. So now we just need to dashboard. It's pretty simple. And you know what? Let's change this to Seattle Gray. And let's assign that palette. Apply. Um, let's make this a little bigger. It's going to freak us out, but that's what we want. All right. Let's hide titles. Let's get rid of our legends. Let's make this look nicer so it aligns a little better. That's pretty close. Pretty darn close to what we need. Um, I would actually change the size of these a little bit so it's not as abrasive. So now what you can see is this isn't perfect, right? I mean, we have some margins to fix, but I'm not going to bore you with that. Um, you have your central. You have the... Also, I'd clean up the tooltip because this is going to drive anyone over and sales nuts. Um, but basically, you have a percent of total, and you can see where your regions, where the sales are going. How much is going to furniture? How much is going to office supplies and technology? Um, this is a pretty sexy graph. This is a pretty fun thing to look at. Um, but I would argue that this bang for buck is terrible. Um, this took... A lot of effort, um, understanding of sigmoid functions and desensification that put in front of um, who's going to be maintaining this, which is typically a junior visualization developer, putting them in that situation is not great. Um, and also it's just sort of violating one of my main principles. Um, it's not my main principle, a principle that I try to hold myself to and it's getting your design the heck out of the way of the story the data is trying to tell. Um, this is a percent of total. Uh, this is a percent of total for two dimensions. How much is central is going to furniture and how much of furniture actually makes up the total of that category. Um, and this is something nice to look at, but it doesn't immediately hit you with the data or the viz that you need or the insight that you need. So let's go ahead and create a different visualization here that I think is not as sexy, but definitely better. Um, I'm going to do something I don't normally tell people to do. Uh, I use the show me. Um, again, let's go to United States. Let's apply. Okay. And let's take region up here. Boom. Actually, you know what? This is even easier. Now we have the same exact thing in a much easier to see format. What you see is a overall under or gives you an overall understanding in a very quick manner of how much for technology in the technology category 
does the east region make up? We could even throw, let's throw a table calculation on here, percent of total, and let's change this to compute using category, and let's show this on the label. Oops, sorry, show this on the, uh, yeah, the label. So boom, we now know and can see immediately how much of technology is made up from the east region, how much is of furniture is from the west, this is very simple, and if you wanted to switch these around, it's pretty simple. Oops. You could, you could very easily move that like this, and now you have, for each region, how much of that region is made up. Does sales go to furniture? The point here is your job as a database, or sorry, as a data visualization professional is to tell impactful stories. Um, if your design is distracting from those stories, it's like using language that doesn't necessarily get your point across. So get the hell out of the way of the data, keep your visualization simple, and help people make the right decisions in a very, very quick, quick manner. Uh, I hope this was helpful and I hope you take these principles with you um, and at least sometimes think about, am I doing the right thing? Is this the most straightforward way to do this? Um, if you do that, even if it's integration work, um, I think you're going to find that you're going to make better decisions when you go with the simpler method. Thanks a lot.